at present in power generation renewable energy sources are ruling the world among all renewable energy sources solar energy source is mostly used source because it requires less space and easily installable and even it does not require any huge generators to generate the power so here i am using that solar energy for electrical vehicle battery charging applications hence the burden on the grid gets reduced when evs are directly integrated to the solar charging stations so that is the our main proposed idea so here we need to charge our electrical vehicle using solar and when solar is not available we need to take the power from the grid that is the our main concept so if you take the solar here the solar energy is based on irradiation and temperature right and also it is not constant it is variable depending on the time and irradiation and temperature and if you take the throughout the day morning you will get the low power and afternoon you will get the maximum and evening again you will get the low and night time does not have the power okay when solar is not available we will depending on the grid okay that is the secondary but here if you take the throughout the day you will get the maximum power only at afternoon time right so to extract the maximum power from the solar and to get the constant output so here we need to connect the one dc to dc boost converter so this dc dc converter is operated on maximum power point tracking control technique with pa controller okay so we need to give pulses with the help of these two techniques then only our dc dc converter will turn on so here we have so many mppt techniques but here in our project i am using the incremental conductance okay here it will take the voltage and current of the solar system and give the pulses to our dc dc converter okay now you will get the constant dc at the output and coming to grid the main problem with the grid is in grid we are having the ac but our ev electrical vehicle requires dc right okay so first of all we need to connect the ac into dc with the help of ac to dc converter nothing but the rectifier and before that we need to connect to the one passive filter because if you get any harmonics from the grid side it can reduce so after passive filter i need to connect to ac to dc converter because i already told you in grid we are getting the ac but our electrical vehicle needs dc right so this is the ac to dc converter that too it is bidirectional we are taking the bidirectional ac to dc converter why i am taking bidirectional converter here in our concept we are taking grid to vehicle operation same as well as i am also taking vehicle to grid operation because whenever grid needed the power if electrical vehicle have the maximum state of charge then it can give back power to the grid so that it will help proof our grid in peak periods that's why i am using the ac to dc converter okay so it will act as a rectifier while g2v operation and it act as a inverter while v2g operation okay so after converter we need to connect to the one dc link capacitor because in this single phase converter at output dc we are having second order harmonics so to reduce that we need to take the one filter capacitor so after that we need to connect to the one buck boost converter for our electrical vehicle because our electrical vehicle batteries have lower voltages but here at the solar our grid contains higher voltages okay so whenever this source power is go to battery we need to do the buck operation and whenever this battery is giving back to the grid we need to do the boost operation because electrical vehicle have lower voltages and grid need the higher voltages so that's why i'm connecting here buck boost converter okay after that we need to connect one passive filter again and we can connect to the grid this is our overall circuit diagram now just look into your title then you will get the exact idea this is our title solar based electrical vehicle charging circuit in v2g and g2v mode of operations so we already discussed our electrical vehicle is charged based on solar when solar is not available we will take the grid so that is the g2v operation when our grid needs power vehicle give back power to the grid that is the v2g and g2v mode of operations that's it that is the title and next we need to look into the control system because in our circuit we are taking the dc dc converter and here also one buck push converter and here i'm taking the one bidirectional converter so to give the switching pulses to this power electronic converters we need to track the input and outputs and give pulses according to the tor converters now look into that control systems this is the control circuit for solar boost converter it will take the output of the solar system that has the reference and here it will take the maximum power point track so i already told you we are using the incremental conductance algorithm so in incremental conductance it will take the solar voltage and solar pv will track these two and use that algorithm and give output to the our comparator so it will compare these two 
and give output to the PA controller proportional integral that's why it is having proportional gain and integral gain so output of this PA controller will give to pulse width modulation so this pulse width modulation can compare this value and this carrier wave so now it will give the pulses to our switch T1 okay so now that switch is on and off here that DC DC converter now see the circuit diagram for our buck boost converter before the electrical vehicle this is the control circuit for buck boost converter here we have the two levels one is the upper level control part and below is the lower level control part so upper level control part determine when it is boost operation and when it is the buck operation so it is depending on the state of charge of the battery because in the ev battery if it doesn't have the sufficient voltage it does not give back to the grid right so if electrical vehicle have the sufficient state of charge then only it can give back to the grid if not we need to charge that battery so depending on the state of charge the upper level control will determine the whether it is the boost operation or whether it is the buck operation so that's why here the input it is taking the state of charge of the battery and here you can give one or zero okay when charging mode it will give the one when discharging mode it will give the zero and here also if the charger is on then it will give the one if not it will give the zero so this outputs will go to the and gate based on the and rule it will give the buck converter or boost converter and coming to the lower level it will take reference value and the actual value and give it to the comparator and the error signal will give to the PA controller so PA control output is go to pulse generator so this pulse generator will compare this value and this carrier wave value and give the output pulse to switch S5 because in back push converters we have two switches S5 and S6 so here the pulses will give to the S5 so same like below it will take one reference and actual error given to the PA controller and pulse generator again now the signal will go to the S6 so if switch S5 is on then it is buck if S6 it is the boost that's it that is the control part of our buck boost converter now look into bidirectional AC to DC converter control circuit this is the control circuit for bidirectional AC to DC converter so the single phase converter have four switches so we need to give the gate pulses to these four switches okay starting we are taking the VDC reference value and here we will compare that with the actual value so the error signal will give to the PA controller and after that it is multiplied with the grid voltage and compare with the grid current and reference grid current so then we need to compare these two and give to the proportional resonant controller we are using here proportional resonant controller here you can use the PA controller also but why I am using the proportional resonant means by comparing with the conventional PA control method, the proportional control can introduce an infinite gain at the fundamental frequency and hence can achieve the zero steady state error. Okay, that is the advantage of PR controller. That's why I am taking here. So the output of the PR controller will give to the hysteresis logic. Then based on that logic, our switches will be on. That is the our control systems block. Now just look into circuit diagram once again. This is our exact circuit diagram. First of all, I am taking the solar PV here as we discussed. After that we need to connect to the boost converter that's why I am connecting the boost converter this inductor and diode and this switch will make a boost converter and I already told you how we give this switch T1 pulses using the control circuit okay and below I am taking the grid after grid we are taking the passive filter input passive filter and one bidirectional AC to DC converter and it have four switches and after that one DC link then one buck boost converter this S5 and S6 okay then output passive filter l naught and c naught and give it to the our battery and also this circuit contains three mode of operations first mode solar to vehicle and second mode grid to vehicle when solar is not available and third vehicle to grid these are the three mode of operations now open your matlab and we will study this circuit this is our matlab simulation as we discussed so same connections here i'm taking the solar system solar pv and give input as radiation and temperature after that we need to connect to the bush converter this inductor switch and diode will make a boost converter before that we need to make the current measurement and voltage measurement to see the voltage and currents okay and we already discussed how this boost converter will get the pulses based on mppt and pa control right so here i am using that control algorithm so vpv solar pv voltage it will take and below it will take the incremental conductance MPPT so this block will known as MPPT okay so then PA control will be used after that pulse width modulation with the help of one carrier wave we can give pulses to our push converter 
and below we need to take the grid and we need to measure the current and voltage with the help of current and voltage measurements after that one input filter combination of l and c so then after we need to take the one bidirectional ac to dc and dc to ac converter so this four switches will make a bidirectional converter so after that we need to connect to the one dc link capacitor and then one buck bush converter this s5 and s will make a buck bush converter then output filter and give it to the electrical vehicle battery and to measure the electrical vehicle battery state of charge and current and voltage i am measuring here okay and here how we are taking switching passes to our puck push converter we already discussed same algorithm here we need to take the reference voltage and the actual voltage and give it to the pa controller with the help of pulse width modulation then it will give the pulses okay and here at the upper controller it will determine the whether it is push converter or buck converter right so based on the state of charge of the battery so that's why i am taking the soc of the battery i already measured here at the battery so i am taking same and give it to here so it will compare the state of charge of the battery and give the logic whether it is the buck or boost okay so upper this is for switch as and same here at the bottom this is for switch s6 and coming to inverter switching operations so this is the inverter right nothing but the ac to dc bidirection converter right so i am giving this switching pulses using this below control algorithm so i am taking the one reference and this is the actual i need to compare these two and give it to p controller i need to multiply that with the grid voltage and after that i am taking the grid current and giving to proportional resonant controller okay this is the pr controller proportional resonant controller and give it to hysteresis logic and this logic will give pulses to our switches so i already told you it have three mode of operations right so this is first mode of operation pv to vehicle okay now run your circuit and you can able to know in pv to vehicle battery is charging or discharging so solar power will be going to battery right so battery is in charging mode so now open your scopes so i had told you battery is in charging mode right so here state of charge of the battery i am opening the scope scope 6 that is the state of charge of our battery okay so you can see it is charging and open all remaining scopes and now see the s6 and s5 pulses s5 and s6 nothing but the buck push can auto switches okay so at this mode which is operate buck or boost so pv is going to the vehicle right so pv is going to vehicle means pv have higher voltage or battery have lower voltage so we need to use the buck and water so buck and water is nothing but s5 or s6 s5 right that's why s5 having the one and s6 having the zero that means here buck and water is on now see the switching pulses of t1 t1 is nothing but the boost converter solar system okay so just click on the scope here you get the pulses just zoom it here you can able to see the on and off pulses of our solar boost converter okay so here you can able to see the voltage and mppt of our solar system so open the scope to you can able to see the voltage of this solar system you will get that 200 volts okay and below you can able to see the dc voltage so you can get the 400 at the output of solar system you will get the 200 volts but after push counter it is going to 400 volts so it is step up so here you can able to see the v battery and i battery so voltage of the battery and current of the battery so these are the two values that's it that is the first mode of operation solar to vehicle now open the second circuit that is grid to vehicle so this is the same circuit but here we are giving the battery power from the grid okay not from the pv here pv is completely absent okay just run your circuit so here at the output you can able to see the waveforms for solar to vehicle we see in the solar voltage and solar current so here grid to vehicle right so that's why we need to see the grid voltage and grid current here so just click on the scope you can able to get the grid voltage and grid current okay so these are the voltage and current waveforms of our grid you can able to see here this yellow color indicates the voltage and this blue color indicates the current so here these two are in phase whenever the voltage is increasing here also current is increasing and whenever the voltage is decreasing here current also decreasing that is nothing but the these two are in phase okay means battery is charging here so it is going in same direction okay not in reverse direction that is the indication i am explaining you and below you can able to see the battery voltage and battery current these are the battery voltage and battery current when solar is connected same voltage for the battery when the grid is connected same voltage of the battery because battery rating does not change right and below you can able to see the state of charge so it's same thing it is charging so above you can see the switching pulses of our ac to dc converter so you can able to see on and off pulses of the two switches now open the third model this is the vehicle to grid operation here you can able to observe vehicle power is going back to the grid so when grid is needed battery can give power back to the grid okay just run your circuit here you can able to see the clear difference in the waveform first of all open the state of charge of the vehicle here you can able to get the it is discharging right it is discharging means battery power is going back to the grid that's why state of charge is decreasing okay and about two modes it is charging right 
now open the voltage and current of the grid so this is the voltage and current values of the grid so here you can able to see the ac nature and the yellow color indicates the voltage and blue color indicates the current but it is the out of phase whenever voltage is increasing current is decreasing right and whenever voltage is decreasing current is increasing right so this is the out of phase that indicates the reversing of polarity so reverse direction part okay now you can able to see the voltage and currents of battery also so whenever the state of charge is decreasing voltage also decreasing right that's why voltage is decreasing that's it these are the three mode of operations if you like this concept i given the reference paper in description you can check it if you like it just contact me i will give you complete assistance and complete explanation up to your submission